welcome everyone and thank you Joachim for being with us and we are on our uh, third webinar in this series on standard work where um, to see the recap the first first webinar was uh, on the inside out perspective you know starting with the value add person um, and then we had the second webinar which is on the key concepts for success and finally on webinar number three we are here with um, the uh, tools and abilities, abilities related to the tools, and Joachim's going to get into that in more detail. So um, uh, a couple other things about it. If you have any questions as we go along, you could post them in the Q&A or in the chat, and I'll watch that. And also, too, some of Joachim's going to talk about this, but um, coming up in April, April 9th and 10th in Indianapolis, Indiana, we'll have the TWI Summit and Katacon 10, which will run concurrently. So if you register for either one of them, you can... 10 stuff in the other one, which will be, that'll be some of the subject matter that Joachim is going to be talking about today. So I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Jim. Uh, and good evening from Sweden uh, and, uh, or good day wherever you are. Um, so this is webinar number three on this, uh, this amazing topic, actually, because it, it has such a, it's, wide uh, but it's also incredibly deep uh, and we're we've been touching on things uh to try to sort of scope standardized work in a, in a slightly different manner uh so today we're gonna discuss and we do this more of a like a dialogue between me and jim um so we're going to talk about basically four things um the um say the the conditions uh, for efficiency and, um, and we have that in a in a gateway for efficiency um, we're going to talk about the TWI programs how they fit into standardized work uh, and how that fits into the tools uh, tools of the subject um, and how do, how do we actually develop skills and abilities in in this area? And then we're going to touch a little bit on the say definitions of standardized work. That standardized work, as such, is quite specific for uh, the connection to TPS or Toyota Production System. Um, so, talking about the the gateway for efficiency, which is basically the the old uh, the old fashioned um, way of explaining things through through t uh, training within industry. And for us, it, it always starts with a foundation of uh, management direction and support. Uh, nothing is ever gonna move unless management drives uh, and owns standardized work. If they're not committed to this effort, uh, it's never gonna fly. And that is just like full stop. Uh, oftentimes we talk about the standardized work being um, driven from bottom bottom up the, uh, because it's enabling people, empowering people uh, to do their work in the best way possible. But as we've touched in these webinars, uh, it will never fly completely without the uh, uh, the drive and foundational setup from from management and uh, so that is just like uh, a deal breaker if you don't the other part is uh, talking about knowledge um, and we always talk about knowledge from knowledge of the work knowledge of responsibilities uh, and it's the same thing here um, and usually in our in our daily line role we have clear responsibilities. I do this, that's part of my role. You do this, that's part of your role. Uh, but in terms of improving the improving the business, improving our processes, uh, what's my role there? If I am a sales manager or I'm a production lead or a quality manager, what's my role? And if that's not clear, and my knowledge of the work, that is the work of improving the business, if that's not sufficient, uh, we're gonna struggle. So both of these uh, elements are crucial for success. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, and you can debate those two things. We always say that knowledge of the work, uh, you need to have a deep understanding of the, uh, of the work. Um, and what I've seen over the years as, as a coach and trainer is uh, we, we allow leaders uh, to sort of take a quick route. Uh, they don't get enough training. It's not clear what's expected of them. And uh, so a lot of leaders get a little bit lost. Uh, and what do you do when you get lost? Uh, you say no, or you avoid the topic. And now we're losing traction. So uh, to avoid having leaders to become the, the last beginners of standardized work, uh, they, as everybody else, need proper training. Um, and training that actually evolves into ability, uh, not only knowing, knowing what to do, but also being able to do. Um, and that leads us to next level, which is skill. Uh, and for us, there's, there's three, three foundational skills that we need. And that is the skill of improving methods, uh, the skill of instructing, and the skill of leading. So on each level in the organization, uh, we need to build uh, sufficient skill to be able to actually move and improve the business in the rate that we need to. Um, and ultimately, all these things, the, the foundation uh, of management support and drive, um, knowledge of work and the knowledge of responsibilities and the three skills, they all aim for one thing. And that is what's been our focus here in these webinars, and that is making value flow. Uh, the ultimate goal is always flow. And I, I know in our discussions, Jim, uh, you've always come back to that sort of, the foundational mindset of, it is flow we're looking for, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, going back to flow. And even, even back in my background, before we knew about TWI, we would be able to design well for flow, but we didn't have the skills to do it at a consistent level, which is where the TWI stuff rolls in. And it's kind of easy to forget uh, because we, we tend to do that when we learn new things. We learn, um, we learn a new thing and then we tend to forget all the other stuff that we've learned. Um, and what, what standardized work pulls for is all that knowledge, all that experience, all that skill that we have in, in tools, value stream mapping, all the, all the other tools that we have uh, must come in and join in to make standardized work strong. And for those of you who are not familiar with TWI, um, what we see is that uh, the, the different programs, they answer to different questions, uh, where uh, the skill of instructing through the program of job instruction, it answers the question, uh, I can't do, uh, or the person can't do. Uh, and that means I can't do it safe, I can't do it correct, and I can't do it conscientiously. So in that sense, if we can figure out that you can't do it the right way, then I can teach you, I can instruct you so you can actually do it. Um, problem is, if I teach you well, uh, but you don't really trust me as a leader, <clears throat> that means you will choose not to. You choose not to follow. Or we can say, I don't want to follow. I've got my own way. I believe that's best for me. And no matter what kind of instruction you will give me, uh, I don't care. Which is a way different problem uh, than saying I can't do. Uh, and that leads us to the program Job Relations which is designed to create trust between leaders and, and their employees. And then the third program, uh, 
because if I can do, I want to do it, but it's really, really difficult. That's where job methods comes in, uh, comes in. Uh, and if it's a, a very complex process that I'm intended to do, uh, it is our job as leaders uh, to help simplify, um, get rid of things that don't add value and squeeze every ounce of non-value added uh, activity out of it. So that's how the, the TWI programs come into play because no matter what, as our friend Dennis Becker always says, at the end of the spear, uh, there you have basically your three uh, recurring root causes to why we have problems. Can't do, can't do, don't want to, or it's bloody difficult to do it right. So how does that play together with the, the classic standardized work toolbox? Um, well, <clears throat> if we take an example, um, so if we start with the, the tool itself, um, one of my favorites is actually the work combination sheet, where you look at what uh, all, the, all the steps I need to take and in what sequence am I supposed to do that? Uh, when do I actually add value? Uh, when do I need to walk over to the next process? Uh, do I need to start a machine when I do that step? And, and how does this trail end up with me being back in the same position as I started within designated tag time? The reason why it's my favorite tool is once you master this one, uh, this is actually where a lot of these uh, myths that you see from uh, Japanese leaders going around the world, they, and you can, you can see posts saying, the Japanese came in, they squeezed like 90% of the, the whip out of the process, uh, efficiency blew up and so, so on. That is because they master the work combination sheet. And I think it's pretty cool. But the, that's what you see. Uh, the, the work combination sheet is what you see. What you don't see is the ability that they've gained through job methods. And job methods is the way where you actually, uh, in a very structured way, uh, come up with your new process, where you question every detail uh, and you ask the questions, why, why do we need it? What's its purpose? If we don't need it, eliminate it, and so on. Um, and if you have that skill in the background, that's like the engine uh, behind the, the tool. So if that makes sense, uh, what I see is that we, uh, we apply that sort of thinking on all the other tools. Um, say I wanna make a new layout in my factory. Now, what, what kind of knowledge do I have that will drive the right kind of, of layout? Uh, what am I looking for? Uh, what's the backbone of my thinking uh, to come up with a good layout for, for the needs we have? I'm not sure if that makes sense, Jim. Yeah, and one thing maybe you can even elaborate on a little bit more. One thing I found is, as these tools, as you write, as you... J.I. train people to do the work, GM make improvements to make the work better. One thing I found out is that's one part, another convergence comes in, especially when you're talking about layout, is it makes us think about designing the equipment differently in order to facilitate that, to help facilitate that flow ultimately. And also so from the training and improvement that um, the machines become part of that equation to help the people work better and more effectively and for the ideally the product and information to flow better so so a lot of those um basic questions you find in job methods so what do we do in job methods when we question every detail we also question uh layout machines uh the design of the product 
uh, what happens if we do a product design which actually makes it more simple to assemble? Uh, how can we build the future layout if we do that? So we question not only on activity, but also on uh, the surrounding factors. Um, typically machinery, material, uh, but also the manpower. Um, and we could take another example. If we want to do a Yamazumi chart or balancing our line, uh, we, we tend to have problems uh, balancing because we can't move one, uh, one process from one station to another. Uh, we have a problem. So what do we do? Uh, well, one thing we can do is we can actually train the operator to do it faster. Uh, or we need to simplify that process in, in a way that, that makes it fit within tag time. So no matter where we go in the tools, uh, we end up back to the TWI programs. And I think that's kind of fascinating. Uh, but it's not a, in that sense, it's not a surprise since the Japanese first learned about the, uh, the TWI programs and then started applying them over and over again. And then they, that sort of ability shows itself in two different kind of, kinds of tools. What also is fascinating is if we apply that mindset of uh, we, we use tools based on the skills back in the uh, TWI programs, every time we do this, it's a, a self-enforcing uh, cycle, which means I will do be better at it the next time I do it. Uh, so through applying, through using tools, showing my ability, uh, and what happens when we use the classic standardized work tools is we, we visualize our thinking. And when we visualize our thinking, it gives us the possibility to give you feedback. So having a, a trained person to give you feedback, just like in any sports or any, any other part of our lives where it's natural to have a coach, uh, the same thing applies here. For me to be really good at something, you need to give me feedback. Is there something I'm missing? Is there something I should actually focus more on? Have you thought of, uh, what if you do this? Uh, if you go back and actually think about this, uh, then the next time I do it, my solution will be even better. And eventually I'll actually end up in a point where I can give feedback to others. Uh, and I see this cycle of you know, visualizing and, and coaching coming back in so many different things. Uh, be, I, yeah, sorry. As you say, see how something else you're talking about that, I think would be is not only is it the standard work, you know, standard work, so the operator does the process same and all that, but also we're talking about feedback loops. That also becomes a feedback loop for the supervisor who would know that, who would have trained him, and he can easily not only the some of the um, visual things that you have, maybe like the work combination sheet, but also just knowing the job, he could quickly watch and is he doing the job correctly or is he running into any issues because that standard wouldn't be followed so there's in a way multiple layered feedback loops um for the operator and the supervisor in in accordance with that and in accordance with the twi programs exactly and where we started this webinar which uh, the first webinar we, was we we talked a lot about the uh, um standardized work being so much more hard and soul uh, than just tools. Uh, so the the, uh, the supervisor of uh, of the team, through visualizing the way we work, uh, also shows uh, that I hereby, by posting this A3 on the wall, I pledge to the company that this will happen in my in my workplace. But commitment doesn't come from me posting something on the wall. 
commitment comes from uh, we're on a journey here. Uh, so if you're my boss and you give me good feedback, I feel I improve. That that builds commitment. Um, so uh, it all comes to be, uh, comes together in a pretty nice package when you look at it. That uh, we use tools not to solve the problem. We use tools to visualize our thinking through feedback. Uh, we can see where our weaknesses or strengths are, uh, and I can continuously improve the way I think. Um, we've also talked about Toyota Kata uh, and the improvement Kata and coaching Kata, uh, which is the way you're, you're applying scientific thinking. Uh, and it's the same thing here. It's already built into the system. If you if you close the loop with good feedback loops, uh, well, there you go. There you have your, um, because you build target conditions, you strive, and through standardized work, you get a platform for how do we, how do we visualize a future state, a target condition. Um, and as a leader, Coming back to leaders, uh, you have to make sure that that person that you're coaching is actually working on the right problem that leads to higher competitiveness in towards our customers. So to to sort of wrap up the the webinars, uh, we're back to the basic things of. Uh, Instructing, improving methods, leading in a way that makes people tr trust you. Create strong feedback loops through coaching and feedback. And repeat and repeat and repeat. So it's not in the tools you find the answer. Uh, it's in that dialogue of you show me what you have. Uh, and I will help you become better um, and it narrows down to some very very foundational um, abilities to start to make this work it is actually like four things that you that you need to know um, and they're already out there um, unfortunately what I see is that very few people still adopt the TWI programs I'm not sure about the state in, in the US, but uh, in Sweden, there's not a lot of companies to actually use, uh, use TWI. Uh, but we try using the tools, but we're missing foundational skills. And therefore, uh, we come a bit on the way by using the tools, but we're no, never going to get that full effect. We're ne never going to get to that quick flow that the Japanese are building uh, unless we unleash the, the power of, of TWI on top of it. Yeah, which, which flow is still the, still the goal, isn't it? It is, it is. I mean, we're, we are we're competing on a global, uh, global level. Uh, and I can see, uh, I've just started a new job. Uh, so I'm a quality manager at an electronics company here, here in Sweden. Uh, and when you know it, you can come into any business and you can actually see where where do we struggle and why do we struggle. Uh, and it all comes back to, to just this thing. Uh, we, uh, we're not good enough to visualize our work. We are, uh, we don't have strong instructional uh, abilities. Um, because simply we don't know it is, exists. So we're not asking for it because we don't know where it is. Um, so we struggle through a lot of those things, but we still believe that we can do all the fancy stuff that the Japanese are doing. Uh, and we're never gonna do that unless we come back to the foundations. Yeah, and I like what you said about the, the like the, the J.I. Jamin, you know, J.R. Art. Those are really skills that help you and help you enhance and understand the tools through those feedback loops and help you take the tools. So you, you really, because you really shouldn't just 
copy the tools that somebody else has used. You need to understand them and see if they're valid for your particular circumstance and all that, or even be notified for your needs and purposes. You know, back to the goal of flow, you know, tying into the goal of the organization. One of the things I know we talked in the past um, webinars was about stability. Can you, I know uh, part of this is about, you know, creating good stability. Maybe you can, you know, pull that forward from some of the other webinar, the other two webinars we did in the context of this. Um, well, to, to be able to get things to flow, it has to be stable. Um, um, I, see, I see that daily now in my new job where we build queues, we build buffers because we're not stable, uh, because we have no other option. Uh, because it, if it varies too much, well, something has to be able to, to balance that out. Uh, but all those cues uh, and buffers also keep us in the past. And I think that's kind of fascinating how, because a queue is something that we should have done yesterday, but we're, we're, we're working on it now. Uh, and so cues actually keep us stuck in the past. I think that's kind of, kind of interesting. Instead of us talking about what are we supposed to do today to meet customer demands today? Uh, instead, we talk about things that came in a couple of days ago or weeks ago, and so it keeps us in the past. Uh, so stability is just uh, to be able to get rid of all those cues, get rid of buffers. Uh, once we find stability and we trust our processes, well, then all of a sudden it, it jacks in, and now we can flow where we can, and we pull only where we must. Okay. Yeah. Any, does anybody have any questions that they want to put in the Q and A or in the in the chat? That would be nice. Okay. You know, maybe you think about that and all that. I don't know if you have any final final comments, Joachim. The the last one is actually the uh, uh, the idea of uh, standardized work versus uh, work standards. Uh, what I learned from Mr. Kado in, in Japan was that standardized work actually follows some, some really specific rules uh, in the uh, TPS aspect, um, where beyond the, the, the popular version of, of standardized work, uh, you don't put buffers in just everywhere, uh, but you actually have set rules for where do you put a, a buffer? Uh, how much do you put in buffer? Uh, so it actually follows some some really specific rules. Uh, we don't have time to get get into those details here, uh, but it, uh, it, there is a difference between talking about standardized work and actually follow those uh, specific rules. Um, and coming back to work combination sheet, if you know the rules. Uh, you can actually do so much more with it. Uh, so I can only urge people to uh, further deepen your understanding and continue your studies. Uh, this is going to be a long stretch before we're there, uh, or it's going to be a fun journey. Okay, great. Thank you, Joachim. And kind of, uh, I guess if you people are interested in learning more, certainly, like I mentioned at the upfront, is uh, coming up April 9th and 10th um, are the TWI Summit and the Kata Summit, KataCon 10. I mean, find out more information about those at leanfrontiers.com. It'll be in Indianapolis, Indiana. And not only will you be able to meet, you know, thought leaders, practitioners, other people there, there's some workshops associated with, and also some of the, the 10 hour training too, post summit, the some 10 hour Kata training and uh, 10 hour, I think this, this year we're doing the job relations training. So um, appreciate, your, appreciate you sharing uh, everything with us, Joachim, and uh, we thank everybody for being a part of it.